Hey YouTube, what's up? So, I recently completed a spring semester of college, and throughout this semester, I was able to find some ways of studying that really helped me and allowed me to be successful. And so that's why I'm making this video um, to show people kind of what I did that when I studied that I had never really done previously, and then maybe uh, hopefully some of the things I do in this video um, can help somebody else. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use Evernote. Um, Evernote is, in my opinion, the best note-taking app available. It's the best way to compile all your notes. It's the best way to keep your notes organized. And it's certainly the best way to sync all of your notes across all of your devices. So I'm on a Mac, so Evernote is obviously available for Mac. It's available for PC, it's available for Android, it's available for iOS, uh, I believe Windows Phone as well. Pretty much anything you can think of. And what's cool about it is even if you don't want to have the app, or like let's say maybe you don't have space for the app, if, if that's a scenario, you can still utilize Evernote just by going to evernote.com and it's a free service uh, up to so much storage. And what I'm using is the free version. And it's just a really good way I found to study. So over here I have an example notebook. And so Evernote, if you if you don't know, if you're unfamiliar with Evernote, uh, you compile notebooks and then within those notebooks is your full layout of notes. And so what I would do, what I did this past semester, what I would recommend you do is at the beginning of your semester, let's say you have a film class and a biology class and maybe an art history class and like a public speaking class. Let's say you have four classes. Make a notebook for each of those classes. So if you have four classes, that'd be four different notebooks. If you have five classes, five different notebooks and on and on. So that's the best way that I found. Keep it all separate and then you will not be, it won't get all jumbled up together. Instead, it'll be you know, organized on its own. So this is how I use it. So let's say we're going to do, I don't know, biology 101 notes. This is obviously just an example. And then so here, here's your Evernote layout. So what I do, the first thing I do whenever I'm going to write notes, I always do this. First, I pull up the color panel over here and I keep it on the left. Next, I make sure I bold my font. I type all my Evernote uh, my Evernote notes, is that how you say it, in bold font. I just find that, not really for my computer, but for my phone, I find that it's easier to read that way. Maybe I just have bad eyes. And then I always type, it, it always tries to go back to the default 14-point uh, font. I always move up to 18, again, just a preference that I have. And then... Um, I use the the crayon color panel or palette, excuse me, crayon. Uh, the other options are WebSafe, Developer, and Apple, but I just use this one. And then what I do always is I slide to having lead up here at the top and maraschino down here at the bottom because I type most of my notes in a red and black color scheme because they contrast each other so well, and I find that it makes it easier. <laughs> Um, to study that way. So for example, like I would do something like this. I would select red and then I'd go photosynthesis. And then you go back and you switch to black and then but you can't just switch to black. You have to actually go down here to the bottom and uh, select it there and then it will change the color. And so like um, photosynthesis converts <clears throat> energy from the sun into chemical energy. And that would be a note. And then I always go a space down. And then, so like for my next note, I'm actually looking at some notes I took. So for my next note, um, I would go like this. I'd go red again, red, and then cell respiration. And then I'd go back to black, and then 
um, every living thing uses glucose. And then again, down, and, and so on. And now, what I would do, like, when you fill up the whole page like this, it's a lot of black and it's a lot of red, and your eye kind of tends to run on it. So, what I would do if, let's say there's something that, that stands out, that's like, maybe your professor says, you know, during lecture, maybe they stop and they make a point of, hey, listen up to this, or hey, Make an extra note of this. Maybe it's something really important on your upcoming exam. What I would do, because like I said, when you have a full page of red text, black text, red, it starts to kind of run, and your eye, it might all blend together. But so what I do, if there's something really important, I would change to a completely different color for like a one-liner. So like, let's choose this blue right here, and blue. And this isn't you know all that important, but this is just an example. So glucose is stored in chains for long-term energy storage. Like, so let's say my professor really needed us to know that. All of a sudden, you know, it's, you have a bunch of red and a bunch of black, and then all of a sudden here comes this blue. Your eye can tell right away that it's different, and whether you realize it or not, you're going to pay more attention to that because it breaks the norm of the color that you've been using. So that's just like a little bit about, I'm not going to go on through a whole lesson plan of like some notes I have, but what I like to do is for terms, I use red, as you can tell, and then for definitions, I use black. For important, like need to know things, I don't really have a system for that. That's just anything that you know I scroll through and something that almost like it like that pops when your eye sees it something that you see and you go wow that's different because you want it to stand out if it's really important if it's gotta know information you want it to stand out um, and the great thing about Evernote is that there's no excuse I found like there's no excuse not to study because you can say you know oh I have you know I didn't bring my laptop today maybe you have a a MacBook Pro that's really heavy or a PC laptop that's really heavy and you know oh, I, I didn't bring it today to class I don't have it for you know or I didn't take it to the library I can't study that's not the case with Evernote because with Evernote your notes automatically sync to your phone and it's 2015 everybody has their phone in their pocket at all times there's nobody that oh I didn't bring my phone to class today you can survey an entire college campus and you'll find that not one person will say, oh, I don't have my phone today. It just is unheard of. So the good thing about it is your notes are always on your phone. So even if you don't have your laptop, there's no excuse not to study. And that's what I had to tell myself. Instead of looking for a reason not to study, I had to look for reasons. You know, I had to find time to study. Okay, here's, here's 20 minutes in between classes. Let me pull my phone out. And, and go into Evernote and study for that test. That's what I did, and that's how I was able to stay not only focused, but stay organized, and it worked for me. So hopefully that could work for you too if you're unfamiliar with Evernote. Um, you know, that's how I like to stay organized. I like to color code things, as you can tell, and then um, obviously it's important to select different notebooks for all your different classes. That way you can stay organized. So that is how I use Evernote. Um, please leave a like if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful. Please comment below, like how do you use Evernote? Or maybe you don't use Evernote. What do you use instead? How do you stay organized? And like how do you study what works for you? I'd like to know. Um, please subscribe if you're new to the channel. I will have more videos coming. As always, guys, thanks for watching and have a great day.